Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror episode, Masters of Horror, Heckle's Tale. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in the late 19th century. A gentleman on horseback arrives at an old woman's cottage in the middle of the night. Ominously, there are several graves with wooden crosses on the front lawn. The gentleman slowly knocks, and the old woman tells him to come in. He says that he's seeking her, a necromancer. The man quickly gets to the point. He wants her to raise his dead wife from the dead. She has recently died, and the man is bereft with grief. He hears about a necromancer who can bring back the dead, and he pleads for her to help him. But the old woman refuses him, citing that bringing back the dead always has a heavy price. Her deeds of resurrection have taken too much from her too, and she remarks she's all used up. Still, the gentleman insists she can do this extraordinary feat. After a pause, the old woman issues a challenge for him. She will tell him a story, and if after hearing it, he still wants to bring back his wife, then she will do as he wishes. The gentleman accepts, and he sits on a chair by the fireplace. The necromancer begins the tale of Heckle, who was an ambitious and overconfident medical student five decades ago. Heckle's professor at the medical school is teaching the class that God blesses medicine, and all those who pursue it. Heckle, ever the contrarian, challenges his professor, and criticizes him for bringing religion into their studies. He doesn't believe in God or faith. Instead, he worships solid medical evidence and advancement. Heckle cites Frankenstein's experiments as proof that man can be God. The professor scoffs at his example and says that resurrection is not possible because it is God alone who can grant bodies the spark of life. With a glint in his eye, Heckle proudly proclaims that he can bring the dead back to life and he will show the professor how. That night, the classmates and professor watch as he reveals a dead naked woman lying on a table. He explains that she recently died of consumption. The professor criticizes him for procuring the body through nefarious means, but Heckle isn't exactly concerned with ethics. He adds that Heckle's father is a pious man, and he wouldn't approve of Heckle's methods. His father is a sore point for Heckle, and he raises his voice, as he argues that his father wants the cold, hard truth. Heckle then continues his presentation, saying that he closely follows Frankenstein's scientific process, and he will be using an electric current to revive the dead woman. Without further ado, he turns on his machine and electrocutes the woman. For a brief moment, her eyes flash open, but the current is too much, and it fries the woman's body like bacon. The professor then smugly admonishes him for daring to defy God. After everyone else has left Heckle's laboratory, an undertaker visits him. He brings with him a fresh corpse of a man who has died of pneumonia. This undertaker has long been supplying Heckle with corpses for his experiments. However, Heckle is too dejected from his failures to buy a corpse that night. The undertaker suggests he meet with a necromancer named Montesquino, whom he saw perform an impossible feat just days before. Heckle dismisses his suggestion as a mere myth, but the undertaker tells him there is a thin line between science and magic. He invites Heckle to see Montesquino's work for himself. Intrigued, Heckle attends one of Montesquino's demonstrations. Montesquino is a squat man with long hair and a nasty mustache. He claims that he's granted the powers to resurrect the dead, but for every person he brings back, one year of his life is deducted. Montesquino starts his show by holding up a dead dog for the audience to see. He places the animal back into a basket and closes the cover. Montesquino utters a few words in Latin, and suddenly the dog comes back to life. But he bashes the damned dog's head with his cane and fatally shoots it with a gun. He explains to Heckle that resurrecting an animal is much simpler than resurrecting a human because a person's soul is complex. Right at that time, a husband and wife step forward and ask Montesquino to resurrect their dead daughter claimed by diphtheria. The price for her life is $100, a price too steep for the impoverished couple. The wife tries to appeal to Montesquino's good heart so he will bring their daughter back for free, but the necromancer is adamant that he get paid. That night, Heckle visits Montesquino again in his camp within the forest. He asks the necromancer to teach him his ways. But of course, Montesquino's precious knowledge is his bread and butter, so he isn't willing to share it with others. Heckle then accuses him of pretending he can resurrect beings and scamming grief-stricken people. Montesquino takes offense and angrily storms out. The next day, Heckle receives a letter informing him that his father's illness has worsened. He goes inside the forest to have a quiet moment eating bread under the tree. Suddenly, some grayish liquid lands on top of his bread. He looks up and sees a dead man hanging from a rope, 
a placard proclaiming that he's a pedophile nailed to his body. Disgusted, Heckle resumes his journey. Night falls, and he is forced to take shelter inside a cave. There he meets a man named Walter, who offers him a night in his house. Pryde makes Heckle refuse his offer, but when Walter tells him the cave is next to the necropolis, Heckle hesitantly accepts. He looks at the cave, and sure enough, there are lots of tombstones spreading out in the graveyard next door. Walter leads Heckle inside his humble home. They are greeted by Walter's young and beautiful wife, Elise. Heckle's gaze lingers on Elise for a moment too long, and Walter notices his hormone thoughts. Elise herself seems to be intrigued by the young medical student. They sit down for dinner, and Heckle still can't tear his horny eyes away from Elise. Walter bluntly tells Heckle that he must be wondering why such a beautiful girl is married to a poor old man like him. He adds that love is always complicated and does not always run like how we expect it. While pouring more wine into Heckle's glass, Elise asks him if he has ever been in love. Heckle replies he had never experienced true love. Walter then asks him a bold question about whether he had experienced physical love. Heckle is taken aback by the forwardness of the old man and refuses to answer it. Elise leads him down a hallway into the spare bedroom, where he will stay the night. Heckle can't help but inch his face closer to her. For a moment, it seems like Elise is drawn to him as well, but she quickly composes herself and leaves the room. Heckle settles down on the bed, and through a crack in the door, he sees Elise pleasuring herself by the window. She turns around and sees him watching. Instead of being embarrassed, Elise just continues her ministrations. Heckle eventually falls asleep. He wakes up in the middle of the night. This time, he sees Walter meeting with Montesquino. Then sometime later, Elise walks by nursing an infant who is shrieking loudly. She puts down the annoying baby and then angrily whispers to Walter that she cannot wait anymore because she has been waiting for a whole year already. Elise walks out of the door. Heckle gets out of the bed and joins Walter at the table. The old man reveals that because of his age, he's never able to perform his marital duties in bed. Heckle points out that they have a baby together and Walter ruefully replies the father of the baby is Elise's dead husband, whom she loves dearly. When he married her, he tried his best to satisfy her by hiring Montesquino and selling all his possessions to pay the necromancer to resurrect the dead husband. Heckle admonishes him for believing Montesquino's lies, but Walter assures him the necromancer's powers are true. A second later, they heard Elise's screams. Heckle rushes out of the house with Walter's shotgun. Walter chases him and tries to stop him, the same dog that Montesquino resurrected a day before emerges from the edge of the forest and barks at the two men. Heckle bashes it on the head with a rock, but it just keeps coming back to life. Heckle then follows Elise's cries to the necropolis. Walter stays behind at the gate, and Heckle calls him a fool for being deluded. Heckle finds Montesquino smoking a pipe near the tomb. He berates the necromancer for taking advantage of Elise's grief and Walter's foolish desire to please her. Montesquino is unperturbed by Heckle's accusations, and he shows the young man that he didn't do anything to Elise, but actually makes her happy instead. Inside the tomb is a naked Elise, gyrating on top of her dead husband, who has been reanimated, but still looks like a corpse. Around her are other reanimated corpses. Walter appears, and Heckle screams at him for letting this happen. With tears in his eyes, Walter soberly explains that no living person can ever satisfy the horny Elise, so he just lets her sleep with her dead husband to make her happy. The other corpses start joining Elise and her dead husband. Desperate now, Heckle points the shotgun at Montesquino to force him to stop whatever magic is reanimating the corpses. Walter tries to convince Elise to stop, but the other corpses begin tearing him apart and feasting on his organs. Montesquino flees the necropolis and Heckle shoots him. Before he dies, Heckle forces him to say the incantation that will unravel the spell. Heckle passes out in the necropolis. He wakes up the next morning, only to find Walter's dead body. The corpses are now back in their graves. He returns to the house and sees Elise sitting on a rocking chair, nursing her fat baby again. Apparently, she's unbothered by her new husband's death and even alludes that she chose him because he's old and wouldn't get her pregnant. Elise says that her baby looks just like her dead husband. She stands up from her chair and proudly shows the baby's face to him for the first time. To his horror, the baby is actually a zombie, born out of the unholy marital relations between Elise and her resurrected husband. The baby's face is mottled, gray, and monstrous. She presses the baby's face to Heckle's neck and lets the baby rip his throat out with its teeth. That night, Elise sleeps with a zombified Heckle, as the reanimated corpses including Walter and Montesquino just watch like a peeping Tom.
Back to the present, the old woman ends her story there. The gentleman is disgusted by her tale, and he realizes the old woman is actually Elise. Her house is the same house that she and Walter lived in beside the necropolis. Her dead husband suddenly appears, and she kisses his desiccated lips. She tells the gentleman that Montesquino has taught her the dark arts. This enables her to keep resurrecting corpses at night. A second later, the reanimated Walter walks in, holding her zombie baby. The zombie heckle appears too. Horrified, the gentleman runs his smelly ass out of the house and into the night. The movie ends with Elise bottle feeding her annoying baby and her zombie men gathering around her like she's the queen of the dead. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.